knows that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. I mean, there was no way at all that Iraq could have a nuclear weapon. We came in there, and I was the head of the IEA in 1991, and uh, they couldn't make a bomb then, and we dismantled all the enrichment facilities they had. So it was out of question. It was, it was sheer propaganda. The United States of America will not permit the world's most dangerous regimes to threaten us with the world's most destructive weapons. What was the reason for the rush to go to war? The administration seemed in such a haste. I think the U.S. government had decided that they could not wait any longer than to mid-March because the temperatures would get very high. We agree that the Iraqi dictator must not be permitted to threaten America and the world with horrible poisons and diseases and gases and atomic weapons. This man poses a much graver threat than anybody could have possibly imagined. One thing is abundantly clear. Our nation is still in danger. I think most people around the world realize that Saddam Hussein is a threat. Kofi Annan, daværende FN generalsekretær, kaldte krigen ulovlig og et brud på FN's charter. Hans Blix, der var chef for FN's våbeninspektører i Irak, fortalte i et interview på Al Jazeera, at han var blevet truet direkte af Dick Cheney til at diske op med de nødvendige svar. Der var kæmpe demonstrationer mod krigen over hele verden. I Folketinget blev der stemt, om vi skulle i krig. Hele 38 procent deltog slet ikke i denne vigtige afstemning. 28 procent stemte imod, og blot 34 procent stemte for. Det svarer til, at kun en tredjedel af den danske befolknings repræsentanter stemte for at sende os i krig. Vi var jo en lille flok, måske en 5-6 stykker, der startede Grundlovskomiteen i 2003. Og det gjorde vi og ud, øh, ud fra en dyb fortvivlelse og vrede over, at Danmark øh, viste sig at være et aggressivt land, der gik i angrebskrig uden FN-opbakning. Tværtimod, Kofi Annan, dengang generalsekretær i FN, erklærede, at denne krig er ulovlig i henhold til FN-pakken. Værsgo. Det var en situation, Danmark ikke har været i nogensinde før, og det var vi dybt farvet over. Yesterday we saw tens of thousands of demonstrators uh, converge on Washington. They say we should not go to war against Iraq. I would just like to ask you this morning, what do you say to those people? What I would say to them is that uh, the president is trying every means not to go to war, but the decision to go to war is in the hands of Saddam Hussein. One thing that has to factor in is the growing number of U.S. allies, Russia, Germany, Bahrain, now Canada, who say that if you go to war with Saddam, you're going to go alone. Does, a, does the American military have the capability to prosecute this war well, alone? Well, if you're asking, are you asking about Iraq? That well, The subject didn't come up in this meeting. And, uh, and, and but having said that, uh, where's the We take all threats seriously, and uh, we will continue to consult with our friends and allies. But broad opposition remains all over the world to your policy. Will you continue to try to build support? If so, how will you yeah. do that? Or, or do you think that a Security Council vote would be all the mandate you need? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I, you know, uh, broad opposition around the world, not in support of my policy on Iraq. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I think. Most people around the world realize that Saddam Hussein is a threat, and uh, they uh, no one likes war, uh, but they also don't like the idea of Saddam Hussein having a nuclear weapon. 
In the past several weeks, your policy on Iraq has generated opposition from the governments of France, Russia, China, Germany, Turkey, the Arab League, and many other countries, opened a rift at NATO and at the UN, and drawn millions of ordinary citizens around the world into the streets in anti-war protests. I ask, what went wrong that so many governments and peoples around the world now not only disagree with you very strongly, but see the U.S. under your leadership as an arrogant power. I think you'll see when it's all said and done, if we have to use force, a lot of nations will be with us. Iraq will serve as a catalyst for change, positive change. So there's a lot more at stake than just American security and the security of people close by Saddam Hussein. Freedom is at stake as well, and I take that very seriously. Selv de store NATO-lande, Tyskland, Frankrig og Kanada, sagde nej til krigsdeltagelse. Nu skruede krigshøde deres retorik op med Bush berømte ord. Either you are with us, or you are with the terrorists. Either you are with us, either you love freedom, and with nations which embrace freedom, or you are with the enemy. There's no in between. You're either with us or you're with the enemy. That's that's clear. I will continue to make that clear. Iraks udpinte militær lå allerede i ruiner fra krigen i 90'erne, og Irak blev invaderet uden det store besvær. They've been psyoped into believing that. They believe that we're in Iraq. They believe we're in Iraq to promote democracy. The word democracy, you hear George Bush saying, democracy means freedom. No, democracy equals new world order. Most international lawyers around the world have concluded that it was a war in violation of the United Nations Charter. The Charter allows states to use armed force in self-defense against an armed attack. And clearly, neither the United States or the United Kingdom were subject to an armed attack. Alligevel udleverede Danmark fanger til både USA og England, som begge udøver tortur. Det er i direkte strid med Genève-konventionen. Regeringen slettede desuden vigtige beviser i sagen om fangemishandlingen. Amnesty mistænker Danmark for medvirken til tortur. Der er ikke noget at komme efter, der er ikke noget at undersøge. Americans are asking, why do they hate us? They hate our freedoms. By sacrificing human life to serve their radical visions. By abandoning every value except the will to power, they follow in the path of fascism, Nazism, and totalitarianism. And they will follow that path all the way to where it ends, in history's unmarked grave of discarded lies.
Du, herr præsident, og de forenede stater har mere end nogen anden udbredt en vision for frihed og demokrati over hele verden. Tillad mig at hylde dem for dette. Anders Fogh. The other big story this week, George Tenet, former CIA director, now making the rounds. He's got a book. Um, you know, I saw the picture of them in the paper from 2003, when Colin Powell was at the UN holding up that vial and saying, this is Saddam Hussein's bad chemical stuff, and Tenet sat right behind him. I always defended Powell for staying in the administration as long as he did. I said, you know what, better to have one sane guy in the room than none. But I read Maureen Dowd's column this week, and she said, you know what, if Tenet and Powell together, the two guys who knew this was bullshit, had walked out together, maybe this never would have got going. You think that's true? Recently, when President Ford died, there was a lot of revisionist uh, discussion about his pardoning of, of Richard Nixon. And in most cases, both Democrats and Republicans got on the talk shows and said, well, as it turned out, it turned to be, it, 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 it was a great unifier for the country at the time. The country was very divided, chaos. <laughs> and I think it's really quite the opposite, that when you have a precedent set like that, and you have somebody, George Tennant, acknowledging in his book that he knew that the administration was deceiving the American people into a situation that is murdering young men and women from this country and others, that George Tennant and Dick Cheney and Condoleezza Rice and George Bush et al. should be in fucking jail. Efter 2. verdenskrig blev der afholdt retssager for at straffe krigsforbrydere. Det var regeringsmedlemmer og generaler, der hovedsageligt blev holdt ansvarlige for forbrydelser, begået under krigen. Anklagerne lød på forbrydelser mod freden, deltagelse i sammensværgelse om at begå forbrydelser mod freden, krigsforbrydelser, forbrydelser mod menneskeheden. The Charter also allows the Security Council to authorize the use of armed, armed force even if there is only a threat to the peace or a breach of the peace. And so the Security Council could have authorized the, the, the armed for, use of armed force. However, the US and the UK argued that earlier resolution by the Security Council had been violated by the Iraq and that they, the Alliance, were entitled to take action in order to enforce the Council decisions. Most lawyers, and I agree with them, would say that no, it's not the individual members that can do that, but it's the council that could do so. And the council, in the council, there was no majority for such an action. So there was really no legal basis for the war. Fordi en person handlede efter ordre fra sin regering eller fra en overordnet, fritager det ham ikke for ansvar under international lov, eftersom et moralsk valg er ham til stede. Krigsforbryder domstolen i Nürnberg. Jyllands Postens Flemming Rose, medlem af den hemmelige Bilderberg-gruppe, bestilte og udgav de provokerende tegninger. Tegningerne forårsagede, at vores respekterede Danmark nu blev hadet overalt i den muslimske verden, og handel med danske varer gik faretroende i stå.